Ah, and there we go. I'm excited. He's scared. What beer have I got? It's from England. Uh, see if you can guess what it is. <coughs> can you guess what it is? No, it's not Rolf Harris. Um, <laughs> that would be first brewed in 1967. 1967, right. 8.5%. Is it Robinson's Old Tom? Nope. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've already done that. <laughs> Strong. Oh, oh Golden Pride. Fuller's Golden Pride. Oh, wow. Oh. It's their barley wine. Do you know what? Um, I'm not as horrified by this. Okay. I haven't had it, but I've never had it. I've had it. I've had. I've had some. Oh. And I've, I've, and I've had it in cask. So you're going, to, you're going to be inevitably disappointed. Is that what you said? I don't. Well, it was a long time ago. It was at the Butler when Scott had the Butler. Oh dear. This is when Scott could manage to order every single barrel of London Porter produced and keep it going continuously, um, and he did get a Golden Pride in. I remember and. In cask, it was fantastic because it knocked the edges off what I recall being rough around the edges beer in the wall. <laughs> Beautiful. That sounds amazing. It really when was this? This was about six or seven years ago. Six or seven, okay. Years ago. So let's talk about design because Phil has changed their design on the. I quite like the this kind of cylinder bottles. I think they're quite. I think they're quite different. They're quite distinctive. Uh, they've all changed that now. I think it's the move people go to when they don't want to pay a graphic design to their labels again. No. And as a result, they just change the I, shape of the bottle and wrap the can same. I, can I just point out, Jimmy, that um, I can't. My head is behind the bottle now. I look like a. I look like the back of a bottle of golden fried. It's not a good look. I mean. Are you saying well, that's not an improvement? An alcoholic might want to suck my head. <laughs> um, I think it's quite classic. But, but yeah, he's going for it. But the main problem is fighting with he's it. He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> the main the main problem with this though is it's it's it looks and sounds like it's going to be London Pride. It's going to be a golden version of London Pride, which, which is weird because it it's nothing look, like London Pride. It doesn't look as intimidating as an eight point five percent beard should look. Now nah, that's true. No, yeah, it doesn't look. Like, it, that looks like it could get you in trouble if you didn't read the sentence. Well, it's, it's got. Nice. It's, it's, got well, it's, well, it's got those mm. kind of. Oh, yeah, it's got those kind of Christmassy colours to it. It's got that sort of dark. Darkish, maroony red, and the gold. It kind of looks nice and approachable and classy. And a lot of Christmas ales are strong as well, which goes with the theme. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not giving it classy. I'm giving the other. <laughs> okay. I'm giving the other two. So <laughs> let me talk about the. Um, so Chris, will you do the honours, please? Of course, of while I read out the tasting notes. Um, tasting notes: a heady aroma of malt loaf, golden syrup, and caramel pours off this beer from the minute it is decanted into the glass showing off its rich, deep amber colour. The flavour is a rich, satisfying figgy orange with a hint of roast balance with a slightly dry bitterness. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm the, so, Quino, you've had this before. I have had it before. And the rest of us have not had it before. Not for a very long time, admittedly. You've had it before. I have not and had it before. Both, both, no, I've no, had no, it in no. cask, I've had it in bottle, and the times so I've had it in cask and bottle, I was very, very drunk. Right, okay. Okay. So which is a bit so more, bit more in this bottle than we've had in the previous beer reviews because it is this a full five fifty mil bottle. So we're gonna have a bit more of this, but um, that's the side. Fact, I didn't know Fuller's did something quite as spooky as that. No. Yeah. Um, so let's have a look at it first. Uh, it's sort of the colour. It's copper, ambery. Yeah, copper. It looks like hooky almost, doesn't it? I can it's smell it from here as well. Mm. It's, 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 it's caramel. Lovely yeah. colour. Mm. Clear as a clear as a whistle. Doesn't bode well for me, but right. Let's go for the smell. Way. Yeah, that's oh, a barley. No. That's a barley wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to enjoy this. <laughs> I think that's going to take you a little longer to consume than all the others. Um, yeah, have yeah. you got any cigars that we can have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, still I'll call home. Unfortunately, uh, also my table is not made of rich mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not. You're not wearing a smoking jacket. Is that why you tilt the camera up, thusly? <laughs> right. Should we go for the taste, chaps? I think, I think we got it. Yeah, if we got it. Cheers. Oh, that's it's, nice. It's quite sweet. That's no, that's really good. That's a lot of barley wines I've had. That's less rough around the edges than I remember it being. That's oh, this is definitely. See, definitely I'm not, used to really reasonably dark ones. I haven't had a lot of. This is not rough around the edges in the slightest, but it no. is very. It, it is very sweet, it's but smooth. that's the style. It's very smooth. It's um, drinkable. Yeah. Going to give it another approach now. I've gotten used to the. It like doesn't sheer sugar of it. You you get you get the kind of the heat from the alcohol, 
after you've swallowed it and you breathe out, you'll suddenly notice it. But the actual horrible mm. cloying sweetness that you quite often get in barley wines isn't really there. It it's doesn't disguised. linger. It's disguised very well by the way they flavoured it. You get the initial mm. taste is, is sweetness, but it doesn't it doesn't linger. It doesn't, the sweetness does not linger on the palate. No, no it, uh, it's kind of the carameliness. Um, the carameliness does linger, and I'm like, it's not my usual vibe, but like. Genuinely, I think I, I could, I, you know, I could enjoy it, which is more than I usually say of a barley wine. You don't have to scrape it off the inside of your mouth. The no, you're not. Right. You're not doing that tongue scratch on the top of your mouth. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of respectable breweries that you would choose over this that, that do a lot worse job than that. Yeah. In terms Absolutely. Of that. Yeah, which is surprising, refreshingly surprising, I suppose. Well, I think the trouble with the trouble with a bit with a brewery like Fuller's is people often. Are easy to dismiss it. They're very easy to dismiss because they've been around a very, very long time. Nice style. Um, and yet they still do some great beers. They're still, you know, people associate uh, Fuller's with London Pride, essentially, as a beer, which is, is, yeah, yeah, is, is, is ubiquitous, yeah. yes. Um, the but. fact is, uh, and actually some of their other beers, I find their specials and the Oliver Zion are pretty dross, but... The ESB is a great beer. Yeah, I was going to say, I still really like it. ESB. ESB is a lovely beer. London, London, London Porter, obviously, is London a great Porter beer. Is really and, if, and if you bring in some of the other beers from breweries that um, Gales, for example, which they took over many moons ago. <laughs> oh, go on. Sorry, this is amusing because this is Quino goes on for a reverie about this one particular beer that, that Gales did, who Fuller's bought. Go on. Let, 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 let us move aside. Let's not put things in front of... Let's just, just move yeah, things out. arms going to play. Go on, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> the Gales Festival Mild is still possibly the finest beer I've ever drunk in cask when it's in good form. It's, it was an incredible beer. Um, Fuller's used to brew it as a seasonal, as a special and they've not brewed it for at least five years. And whenever I ask them, are they going to brew it? What are they doing with it? What have they done with the recipe? They never reply. They replied. say, leave us alone. I'm with my family. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't even. They don't. Well, they don't even do that. They simply ignore me, which <laughs> which makes me sad. <laughs> but it's, well, an, it's an incredible bit. If it ever, if you ever come across. Gales Festival Miles. You won't. I feel like we do need to uh, <laughs> <you laughs> offer some sympathy. Uh. <laughs> you're, not, you're not offering Quino any hope there, Joan? It won't happen. <laughs> it's so not going to make it. It's like, it's like a, a long lost love that you can only, you can only hanker after. It gets better every time I think oh, about that's it. That's so sad. <laughs> um... So gone. It's overshadowed somewhat the uh, Fuller's it's, gone from it. This has all gone, this has all gone <laughs> horribly wrong. Um, I think it's all right. It is very, very boozy. Um, you can have a great bit, obviously. It's quite nice in the winter, but it's not too dark. It's not too cloying. No, I mean, it's, I no, it's, it's actually remarkably easy. We've been called gold or something. I expect that, I it doesn't. It Golden doesn't price. obey my rule of beers of this strength, which they have to be at least a little bit horrible, <laughs> just just Gold, to, Gold, just to create a social by security. Yeah. Golden Pride is an odd name for it. It's not yeah, a golden think, beer. No, I don't know um, why they call it Golden Pride. It's weird isn't it well to probably to get more sales simply well yeah it's, it's not gold. It's, yeah. I mean I mean, I suppose it's a metaphor isn't it golden as in it's oh, a little gold bit, medal a little, little bit on the back it says sort of stuff. it says gold, that's what they're going for I'm golden right. pride golden prize are award winning exceptionally fine strong ale the rich multi flavours from the pale ale and crystal malts are balanced by the north down challenger goldings and target hops creating a full flavoured beer with an intense finish so it's like a souped up twig. Mm. This is not twig. <laughs> this is a. Uh, this is. Uh, it's definitely not twig. No. I've had twig. I've had my share of twig. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not go down the twig. Tw quick twig, cold sack. I think um, it's really quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so, so, so you're surprised. Yeah. I am. I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I thought mm. it, like I mean it's sweet, but I thought it'd be genuinely sugary as sin. Yeah, there is there is a little bit of sugar on, kind of on the lips now. You can kind of feel it, but it's I can not, tell I've been drinking something. Yeah, but it's but it's not, it's not it's not like it's, it's not like you've been pack manning your way for a load of icing sugar, <laughs> which is what you normally get. <laughs> That's with a these good little analogy there. Right. What noise would that make? No, 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 no. Well, icing sugar is quite a noisy silent. I thought, silent. I thought <laughs> it might be more. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? I okay. Do I think we're going to be done now. Um, so, uh, yeah, bye. <laughs>